Good day. Today I'm going to be doing something slightly different on uh, the vlog. Um, I'm not actually going to be outside. I'm not doing a review either, so don't despair. Uh, I'm going to do something that I did last year. Uh, granted, it is a bit late for it. Uh, but I'm going to have a quick review of the last year. Um, places I've been to, places I've photographed, uh, and kind of places that I've enjoyed going to and the pictures I got from those those locations really. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off Iceland and then probably going to work my way onto the images I took when I was in Europe and then to finish it off I'll just show um, a couple of images I've taken in England. It's going to be a bit of a mix because they would have been taken throughout the year. Uh, it just makes more sense in my, my mind to do it that way. Um, so yeah I'll crack right in uh, on with it. So uh, around about May um, I had about 11 days holiday and I didn't really know what to do with it and um, I had thought about going to Snowdonia um, and the Lake District or even to Scotland um, but I ended up with uh, like I say 11 days off and it's quite a long time and I wanted to see if I could get somewhere that I could you know explore that I'd never been to before so um, I had to think about it and I, I thought why not go to Iceland was quite a budget holiday. Um, I spent about 10, 11 days there. Uh, I hired an estate car and I pretty much lived out of that car all the time I was there. So it's not the most luxurious holiday. It's not gonna be for everyone, but that allowed me to see pretty much the whole island apart from the inaccessible bits in, in the center are still too icy at that time of year to get to them. Um, you couldn't really get to the highlands or anything like that but I could do basically the whole ring road and the western fjords uh, which were the main things I wanted to see there really so headed over to um, Iceland um, now when I landed the weather or the, the kind of weather for the next few days was going to be quite nice so this brings me to the first location which is uh, Kirchefeld now this is a shot that a lot of people would have seen already um, there's a million of one of these images around uh, but it's an iconic place and I really wanted to get there now I tried this location to start off with for sunset it didn't happen it was too cloudy and I got back there about sunrise which at that time in Iceland was about four o'clock in the morning and I got this really really cool kind of sky um, over Kirchfeld. Now the night before there's no actual snow on the peak luckily we had a bit of a dusting of snow um, throughout the night and we're only talking about a four hour gap here between sunset and sunrise so luckily those four hours there's a bit of snow when I was asleep and when I woke up um, we had quite a nice scene with a bit of snow on the top of Kirchfeld and then the light just really kicked off and gave this really cool amazing image Definitely one of my favourite images um, from last year. It's not a very unique one. A lot of people see it, but um, yeah, if you ever get the chance, definitely go and get it. It's a it's a great place to go to. Um, now after that, I kind of um, made my way around different bits of the peninsula for a while, and then I came kind of came back down into the south. Next location that I want to show you the image from um, is Skogafoss. Now. This is a bit of a selfie, so don't shoot me, but this image is probably my favourite image I took last year. Now, all it is, is a real simple shot um, of the waterfall. Now, if you've ever been to Skogafoss, it's a really, really beautiful waterfall because it's quite a powerful one. I think it's about 60 metres high and it's relatively wide. But the really good thing about it is it falls in a way that you don't get too much mist off the bottom um, and this is something I found with a lot of the waterfalls in Iceland is they're very hard to shoot or get any definition on the lower part of them because they're so powerful and you have so much mist and spray um, also what makes Skogafoss unique um, well not 100% unique but unique from the ones I saw in Iceland was uh, the river that comes off it actually curves around to the left which means you can stand almost straight in front of Skogafoss um, without getting wet, without needing any kind of Wellington boots. And you can get a really cool um, straight on shot with a lot of texture in it. And I just love the um, softness in the water, the highlights, the shadows and the, the vignette in this shot. I really, really do 
um, like this one. So that was the, the next image anyway. And I'll, after that location, I made my way only slightly down the, the road, probably about half an hour's drive, and you get to um, Plane Crash, which is a DC-10, I believe. I'll correct it if I'm wrong. Uh, plane crash which is on one of the beaches there which is only like I say about half an hour from Skogafoss. Now this location you have to walk about something like 10 or sorry five kilometers just to it's about a 10 kilometer round hike um, and it was very dark when I got here it actually already pretty much gone past sunset so this is shooting in the twilight um, time around like I say I was there around about May and one thing I quickly learned about the light at that time of year in Iceland is it you have this really amazing soft light. Um, it's hard to explain, but every nearly every single image I took there, it came out with this really nice soft pastels in the colours. You almost felt like you had to add clarity to get the image to something that would resemble somewhere else, uh, another country. But I really like the soft look you've got in the images, and this is a classic example. Um, I love the colours and the tones in this image. It's a bit of a unique composition. You don't see too many one shot um, from this composition. Most of them are shot head on or at an angle of the front. And that probably is the most interesting part of the plane. But I just love the clouds and the softness and the look I got from uh, this angle. And just the colours and the way they all kind of complement each other. Definitely a place I recommend. Um, it's really surreal when you go down there. This um, kind of silver aluminium plane on the, the black sand down there. It it's really is a, a surreal place to visit. Um, highly recommend it. Now, after the plane crash, I made my way to uh, the next location, which is a bit further on. Um, I kind of went to the Diamond Beach and a few other places like that. Um, I wasn't massively happy in my shots there. Um, I had a nice sunrise, but there wasn't really enough ice uh, or big enough ice blocks to, um, or in the right location for me to be majorly happy with it. Uh, but I did go to the Vesterhorn. Now, the Vesterhorn mountain range, when I was here, I had a whole day of drizzle and no let up at all in the weather. Um, and sunrise the next day was non existent because we had the same problem. Now, luckily, shortly after that, um, the mist did clear, the clouds cleared, and I got this really cool um, contrasty image there. Now, the sand there is jet black, um, and the mountain range just erupts out of the water. Now, this image is of the mountain range on a really wide angle lens, with me stood in the water um, with my wellies on, basically just capturing the. Um, the textures in the water with a, a really quick image you don't really get any blur in there quite a quick shutter speed um, really really happy that came out um, really cool place really definitely recommend going to the vest horn if you're there make the extra journey south just keep on going a bit longer and, and it's definitely worth a visit it's a, a stunningly beautiful place so again, that's one of my favourite images from Iceland. Now, the last one is one I took on the Western Fjords. Um, now, it's a picture of a church. It's not an amazing church to look at. There's lots of churches around Iceland like this. Um, but it's just the way the where it lies with the mountain range behind it. Um, now, I took this probably about 1 o'clock in the morning. So it was very dark. But we did have a lot of light there because, like I said, it's still quite twilighty at that, that time of year. Um, but I just love the drama in the cloud behind it. There's so much mood and depth in the cloud above the church that it gave me this really cool, strong, um, vibrant image. And then in black and white, this really, really works, this image. It really kind of brings out the, the depth, the textures and the contrast. So that's the images from iceland obviously i had plenty more where i was from there but i've tried to pick five from each kind of place i've, I've visited so kind of iceland and, and europe as such um now after that i had a break of about three months so i didn't really do any photography at all to be honest i was too busy with other things um, um but in september we kind of got away to europe now um Again, I went over about 10 days before Alice, which allowed me to 
to kind of do all the photographic locations that I wanted to go to, do a lot of hiking, um, and just visit some of the, the places that, you know, not in a hotel, that you're kind of just out and about in the elements. And basically, I kind of got the ferry over again, went worked my way up through um, uh, Belgium, spent a night there, took a, a few images of Ghent, a uh, really cool medieval village. I really liked my time there. Worked my way down into Germany. Now, I went to this castle. I didn't expect um, my images from this location to be anywhere near as much as I liked them. I was expecting um, the other castle down in this uh, Bavaria, Nutrenswein, I'll get that wrong, I'll write it up, to be a lot nicer. But in the end, I really, really liked the image I got at Berg Elps. Now, Berg Elps Castle is in a stunning location. It's in a, the best way to ex describe it, it's in a kind of valley with a round um, set of trees around it. It's kind of in the, a dip, say in the middle of a hill, and all around it is forest. So you can get these really cool high elevations, look down upon it. And when I was there, the light wasn't too bad. It wasn't the nicest, it was a bit harsh. It wasn't any kind of nice golden colors. But the harsh light gave me this really cool side lighting on the side of it. And that meant that I could come back further up and shoot down upon it and have all this strong light on the right hand side of the castle while the left kind of faded away to shadow. And I'm really, really glad how this one came out. The only thing with it, it does look a bit like something from a model village, but I'm really happy with it. It's definitely my favorite image from that location and probably my favorite image from the time I had in Germany uh, when I was there. So that's Burgos Castle. Awesome place. So many different compositions you can get here. I highly recommend a visit. So um, after Burgos, I kind of worked my way down through um, Germany and then kind of went straight through, um, through Austria. Didn't stop off anywhere in Austria, to be honest. Um, I went straight down to the Dolomites and I wanted to get to a place for um, for sunrise which was uh, Sakida. Now Sakida is a high altitude, kind of like a meadow, it's actually a uh, old sea eruption or sea cliff um, when it was all underground this landscape erupted um, from the ground that's where you got quite a long vertical ridge um, with a nice meadow sloping up to it but you get this really awesome uh, mountain structure there and it's 2500 meters um, i got the ski lift up and i spent the night at this location and got some really cool sunset and sunrise images including this image here which was absolutely amazing now I probably could have set this image up better. I probably could have done something better with it when I was taking the image. But this is actually pulled from a time lapse I took. So I didn't want to upset the camera because I knew the mist coming up through the valley was going to look really nice on the time lapse. I had to let it finish. I was just hoping that the composition I got when the sky fired off worked and luckily i think it has it's a really really cool image it's a bit dark in some places so some of the cut natural colors are struggling on this one but the drama in the sky and the color shining through the back really really worked in my opinion and it's probably my favorite image i've taken from the dolomites um, which is an absolutely stunning region probably my favorite place in europe and if you ever get the chance i'd highly recommend going to the dolomites um, so that was that location. From there onwards, I made my way back through Austria. I wanted to go to the town of Haustadt, which is actually quite a small village situated right on the side of a really cool lake. I don't know what the lake's called, sorry. Um, now I got there for sunset, and the images I got at sunset, they were quite nice, um, but there was no real drama as such. I couldn't really taking a thing that I was majorly happy with. It's a beautiful location and when the lights come at night you can get always get good images. I think you always guarantee good images at that location. It's a well shot place um, but in the morning we got this really nice um, cloud inversion coming up across the lake and just kind of going above the top of the town 
which meant I could set up this really nice panoramic shot, Sweden panoramic shot going from the village out to the left, um, and caught this really, really nice um, panoramic shot while I was there. So really cool location, I highly recommend it. It does get very busy though at the shooting point there. Even in the early hours, there will be other photographers there. So just bear in mind, it's it's not a place you can really escape to on your own. Um, after that, made my way down into uh, Slovenia. Now, the first place I went to in Slovenia was a place called um, Jamnik Church. And I can't remember um, the actual name of the church itself, but the, the area is called Jamnik. And... Um, it's, it's quite a simple church again it's a bit like the one in Iceland whereas there's nothing that's striking about the church itself it's just the location it sits in it sits on this really really cool not really a mountain but a bit like a high hill that has a really nice um, kind of leading line road going down to the church and these really nice Julian mountains in the background. Now, I shot this at sunset again the day before. Wasn't massively happy with the outcome. So I made my way back there to do sunrise and the sky just absolutely fired off. Now this image is probably when the sky was on its way out. It wasn't as red and as far as it was in some of the other images. But this is probably my um, favourite composition of it. There was a lot of haze in the background, so the image just have a lot of this blue cold hue in it, and that has been reflected onto the, the foreground, from obviously because it's in the sky, so it is making the image a bit funny with the colours here. It's not quite the well, most well-balanced image colour-wise, but I really like how it came out, really like the, how the sky worked. Um, and considering it was probably the main reason I wanted to go to Slovenia, this image, I'm really happy with the, the luck I got there. So. The last location for Europe, which is one that if you're anywhere near Slovenia, you're probably going to go to, to be honest, is Lake Bled. Now, this place is shot to death. If you do a Google search of Lake Bled, the images that come up for it are absolutely out of this world. It's a stunning location. The weather didn't quite play ball 100% with me. We didn't have anything that dramatic. We didn't have any cloud inversions or mist coming across the lake. Uh, no snow or anything like that but we did get some nice colours nice blue hour shot with the lights and out of all the ones I took there this is my favourite because this is the most balanced image colour wise so I had uh, images with nicer colours in the sky with redder clouds um, but it was hard balancing it with the mountains and the island in the middle uh, just because of the way the sun was rising behind it. This is probably my favourite one there. It's a very well balancing and the reflections are, are really good on this one. They're nice, smooth reflections. The kind of the, the ones from the UK really, they're, like I say, they're a bit out of order. Um, I'll try and do them in the order I shot them through the year. Um, the first shot I'm going to look at is one that was taken um, on the top of Next um, on the viewing platform from... Uh, not far from St Paul's Cathedral, pretty much next door to it. Um, now London is such a cool city to photograph, but they it has been photographed to death. And one thing I really like doing there is trying to use geometric shapes together, trying to get similar shapes or contrasting shapes um, that work well in an image. Now, um, obviously this image has the shard in the background, um, now this kind of wall along the left hand side that zigzags along is the edge of the viewing platform so on top of the the next there so um, it's just simply a wall but it's made up with all these really cool triangles and the roof there is also made up with all these really cool triangles and it just contrasted or not contrasted it fit in perfectly with the shard now also we had some moody skies so by using a filter on this one I've managed to add some drama to the skies and in black and white I think it works really well and um, it's probably my favourite one or one of my favourite ones from this year simply because um, I it worked in my in my view all the kind of triangles came together and made quite an interesting in it, image it's I don't know how many there are in that picture but there's probably well over 30 triangles if you have to count them all 
Um, so that's that location. And the other one is uh, one that I've wanted to photograph for a few years now, which is the time before this, when I was in London, uh, we had scaffolding it, so we couldn't do it. But this is um, Tower Bridge and it's absolutely beautiful bridge. Now it's so majestic and it's so pompous and over the top. It's not a particularly pretty bridge, I wouldn't say. Uh, a pretty bridge in my opinion would be something that's very simplistic but suits the purpose. This thing is all about showing off. So um, it's an absolutely amazing bridge to photograph though. Now I've got some slightly different images of this. Now this was taken in a, during a really nice sunset. There's loads of colour in the sky. Um, but I quite like this one for the composition. There's enough movement in the people on the right that you can tell it's a busy city. Um, which I think it always adds to it. And we've got a London bus going past which is giving some nice lights on a, a long exposure. And there's just a bit of pink colour in the sky that you can see coming through that, that bus. And obviously you've got this really nice cool composition as it looks under the, the tunnel of the first um, tower. Um, like I said, I do have some other ones that are probably more simple shots just looking to the tower with the, the sky and stuff. But I really like how the composition of this one works, the way it's slightly framed and you can kind of see a bit of movement with a bus. Um, after that, the next location is probably uh, where the beast from the east hit the UK. Um, we don't have too much snow down in the southwest normally, but luckily we had a lot of it. I don't know if lucky or not, depends on your opinion. Um, for photographer though, it's quite lucky. We had a lot this year. Now, this is how well long. I've shot it several times in the past. Uh, it's always hit and miss. Dark more I find with the skies, it can be really nice and then it can change to just horrible cloud block in the sun almost instantly. You never know what sunrise or sunset you're going to get on Dartmoor. It's a very, very interchangeable place. Uh, but I knew this location well and I knew with the snow there it would work quite well. Now this is shot in pretty much white out conditions. You can see the snow in the image. It was snowing when I took it. And I think it really adds a bit of drama to it. When you look at close up to the rock and the tour um, you can actually see those kind of the snowflakes on a slightly long exposure coming down through the scene. And I think that really adds to it. Now this is a hawthorn tree that grows out by the two rocks there. It's like I say, it's a very well shot location. Um, but to capture it with all the snow around and the mist in the background and all the kind of things going on it, I think it's really unique and it looks really cool and helps to helps to isolate it. And it's a bit different to what I normally capture with me normally shooting around sunset and sunrise it's something that is kind of totally different to that it's almost void of color uh, completely um, just with a few soft tones of um, kind of browns and grays in there and I really like how it came out right another image um, that I took um, not on Dartmoor this time but in the South Hams now this image is actually a um, quite out of order actually because I know when this was taken. This was taken stupidly the day before I flew to Iceland so I was up probably three o'clock in the morning getting this image um, which meant after driving to the airport to fly to uh, Iceland I was horrendously tired. Um, I don't know why I did it and also there's a bit of cloud in it which really frustrated me because it could have been a stunning image it wasn't for the cloud although it's kind of only a tiny bit there so it does slightly add to it I suppose but this is a shot of the day mark um, in Kingsweir South Devon and it's in the South Hams and this is the Milky Way above it so this was shot around about the time of the year where the Milky Way's core is visible so uh, from the UK so you get the best um, bits of the Milky Way you can unfortunately it was a bit light and for some crazy reason there was loads of light on the foreground I don't know where the light was coming from we couldn't work it out but I think there must have been a bit of light pollution from Kingswear, the, the, the town kind of behind us um, which was lighting it up and it did work well because it meant that most of the foreground on a long exposure came out quite cool you could see most of it a lot of detail in it and what I did is I went and placed a big torch in the bottom of the day mark and which obviously shined up through the middle of it and you've got these cool light beams going above it really creative image 
Um, I really enjoyed doing this one. I didn't really add any extra light to the outside of the day mark. This was all the weird kind of light pollution, I assume, that was lighting it up. Uh, but it's really cool. And I'm really glad how it came out. I actually shot this with a friend as well um, at the same time, which always makes it a bit more exciting, um, a bit more interesting. And it's a bit of a spooky place to be on your own as well. The tower is about 30 meters tall, um, and you get the wind whistle all through it and stuff like that. So it's always uh, better to have someone there with you. Um, so yeah, another one of my favorite images from last year. Now we'll finish on. Um, the final image here, which is one that's slightly different to what I normally do. Um, I would consider this fine art, and I suppose I can probably pick 10 of my images which I can did a fine art. But this one was a vlog I did when I actually decided that I wanted to go out and actually try and photograph um, something that's fine art. And I only did that on one of my vlogs I've ever done. And I think I was really lucky in the fact that the one I did it on, it actually worked. So. And it's only luck because it's just the way the clouds work. So this is Froward Point. It's in the South Hams. It's not far from the day mark, the image you saw two images back, the, the one with the Milky Way. It's literally a 10 minute walk from that one. So it's by Kingsweir. And it's simply a little tiny island that's just off this um, uh, bit of the coast here. And you get these really cool compositions there because you've got quite a few different trees that grown up which are right next to the the coast so you've got contrast between the land the trees and the water now this image is a from what i can remember it's about a 10 or 15 minute exposure um and it has loads of vignette in it and it has these really nice soft white hues in the middle of the image and it's just gave this really surreal kind of silver kind of fine art I suppose um, image of it now the sea really really worked on this one it really came out kind of super smooth and the weather was a bit windy so I didn't didn't think that happened at all but I just really like it I think it's really fine art and I think if you'd have print that in a large print I think it really really come out nicely something a bit different um, still a bit of foreground interest in it which some fine art images do lack um, but I think it's got a bit of everything this one. It's got a bit of fine art in the sea and the sky, but a bit of interest um, in the foreground to the left of the frame. So, um, yeah, I hope you liked them anyway. That's the images um, or a selection of the images that I took from last year. Uh, granted, this is a bit late, this one. It's uh, February now when I've done this, um, but it's just uh, getting the time to sit down and go through it, really. Um, yeah, so really, really happy of how they came out. Um, would have been nice to probably get away in the van a bit more this uh, the, the year I took these. And this year I'm hoping to try and get to a point where I can go away in it probably at least once a month just for one night so I can do a few locations. Just come back from Cornwall. I was down there for two days. That worked really well. Um, you've probably seen the vlogs from that already. And yeah, apart from that, really cool. Really pleased how Iceland went, um, considering I just went over there and rented the car. Um, so yeah, hopefully uh, be some more good images to come out of 2019. And um, I'll catch up with you on the next vlog in the future.